Let's do some news. Time is 2.55 p.m. January 10th, 2020. This is the first news installment of 2020. And we're going to kick things off with a look at CES. Things that you will not see until well after 2020. <laughs> well after. As you can see, I'm joined today by my co-hosts, Chat. Go ahead and say hello, Chat. Thank you so much for joining me today. Being here for me. I appreciate it. Say hello to YouTube. Hey, some of YouTube is here as well, which is great. <laughs> it's weird. It's like it's like a whole other like like community that it's just like, hey, welcome to the party. <laughs> it's like a family reunion. <laughs> Better looking than Vanna White. That's right. Yes, they, they can be. They can't. I mean, maybe, perhaps not. But they are a co-host. <laughs> Didn't Vanna White actually host an episode of? Of uh, 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 of Wheel of Fortune, late uh, for some reason, I guess like Pat Sajak was was sick or something, and she ended up taking over. I want to see that actually. I'm genuinely curious how she did as as the host. It just like never crossed my mind. It's like, well, why does Vanna White host the show? She's been on the show for her whole fucking life. Like, why doesn't she host the show? Uh, I wonder how she did. Uh, anyways, biggest news technically out of CES is this. With that, let me turn that off. Boop, there we go. The PS5 logo was revealed <laughs> at CES. And for some reason, it was just everywhere. Like, I, I was surprised that just the logo, they've teased us now twice. At the uh, at the, the Game Awards, they had, uh, they had a video at the end, it just showed PlayStation 5, right? Just in words, PlayStation 5. And then they release this, and that's it. And and as much as I, I I appreciate PlayStation, we're not getting anything yet. But what's crazy about this, and what makes this technically the biggest news for gaming that comes out that came out of CES, which is a little sad, uh, is that their Instagram post is the most liked gaming related post on Instagram with 5.2 million likes. So that, that is impressive. <laughs> that is in fucking impressive. Even, even the, the, the hottest influencers will not break a million. I, I can't, I don't know anybody that breaks a million. If I see a, if I see a, an influencer, right? Like a model or something like that, that has a good substantial following, they're probably going to get like 12,000 likes or something, right? 12,000 likes. If it was like one of the bigger ones, like, hey, maybe you get like, you know, 50,000 likes, something like that. But for, yeah, for what is effectively just a continuation of the same style of PlayStation logo, which I'm not mad about, which I'm not mad about. Um... It's a lot. People are really excited about this. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of Sony nerds. It is a lot of Sony. It's really the font on the five not seem to fit. So that was the biggest thing that some people are really upset about is that the five apparently didn't look right. And, I, and, and there is like gifts that were showing people with the PS2 logo and they're like, all you had to do is just flip it. And I'm like, but you flip it and it looks like the five. I don't understand what the point people are trying to make. I have no idea. But, uh, but yeah, no, there it is. It says, welcome to 2020 PS5. So we'll probably get more about this at E3. Every console, in a way, had a bit of a presence at, uh, at CES. The next one, <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, the Xbox Series X, the latest console. So the next console to be released by Microsoft. Uh... <laughs> There was a video that AMD had released. And actually, I don't know if I had that video anymore. I think it was like basically disappeared from the internet. Um, if somebody has, I'll be more than happy to take it from you. Let me actually see if I have it. But, oh, here it is, here it is. Okay, so it was, yeah, it was deleted. So this is a render that AMD used, I think also in a video to, um, to basically promote, you know, AMD, whatever. Uh, and it showed some ports. And so, obviously, people who, you know, are interested in the console are going to look at every single detail 
and they're going to look at this and they're going to say, oh, okay, so there's a there's an optical input. There's what looks like maybe a USB-C, I hope, uh, two of those. There's an Ethernet jack, probably gigabits. Uh, there's two HDMI jacks, probably one for like pass-through, I guess, or something. Uh, and then there's a power cable. I know, cookies, what? There's a power cable on this thing. <laughs> but yeah, it's this was handed around. Uh, it's kind of a weird way of saying that, but it was. It was handed around everywhere uh, and speculated upon everywhere. And then we find out that the actual ports or the actual render was used. This is the Xbox Series X imagery used during the AMD CES press conference was not sourced from Microsoft. It does not accurately represent the designer features of the upcoming console. They were taken from TurboSquid.com. So AMD purchased a render from a third-party site that <laughs> that just i guess just rendered you know something what they think it would look like and then they put that in their official announcement video um and then of course microsoft had to step in and say hey <laughs> we we're not <laughs> this is not real please stop speculating on this because they haven't released any information on it uh so the yeah, we don't really know in terms of like what what kind of features the Xbox Series X is going to have. We actually have no idea, uh, but we at least know that what they released, what they announced, uh, was not was not accurate. Um, so yeah, Doritos cheese grater on top. Yeah, they're definitely going with that. Like it's like the sh the Shadow Mac Pro or something, right? <laughs> Dark Mac Pro. It will have a power cable. That'd be the difference, right? Uh, the Switch. The Switch got a little bit of uh, got some headlines. Even though Nintendo didn't really have a presence, I don't think they had a presence at all at CES. Uh, and that was because of Alienware. Alienware has a new device. <laughs> it doesn't have a name, uh, but we'll just call it the Switch. Uh, the Alienware Switch or something for now. Um, but they have their own handheld device that they are uh, they were demonstrating at CES. The, the Mega Switch. There you go. The Mega Switch. The the more than likely considerably overpriced Switch. <laughs> I doubt this will ever get made. Alienware really skirting on that copyright. Yeah, so they have the detachable key, uh, detachable uh, controllers, which, you know, if you I wish I had my Switch within reach here, but if you take a look at this, you know, you can see one of the one of the major, one of the main points of having a controller that you could actually, that, uh, the, sorry, the, the Joy-Cons that come off is that way you could take them and turn them to the side and then you can... You can play with them, but if you look at this, look at where the joy, the joy con or the joystick is in relation to where the, the the actual buttons are. There's no way. There's no way you're going to be able to use this as a separate, you know, like a like a two player joy con type system. So already the functionality that you know they were they were, they were mimicking here off from the switch has been, you know, I mean, well they didn't they didn't follow through with it. Uh, it is, uh, what is it, with cutting edge Intel, <laughs> Intel integrated graphics. You know what I will say is I have a an NVIDIA Shield handheld, which is basically a, and I'll find a picture of it for you guys so you can see what it is if you're not, not familiar. NVIDIA Shield handheld. But it is basically an Xbox 360 controller, but with a screen. And yeah, this is it right here. Cool. Oh, you can take a PC map, maybe fine, whatever. As long as you guys can see it. Um, there you go. So yeah, this is this this device is actually really good. Um, I was able because it's just an Android based based platform, you're able to basically sideload. I uh, sideload, I think, like a like a PlayStation link or whatever, it allows me to play my PlayStation games on this uh, through the internet, which was at the time, you know, this was like like four years ago, five years ago. That was huge. Like being able to play your games remotely was like unheard of, right? Unless you were on live. Um and then, uh, and then also there was the ability to stream games from your NVIDIA-based video card uh, to anywhere in your house. And so, so this this device, I could tell you with confidence, this device is awesome, right? I love this thing. The battery life was he was massive, just absolutely massive. This device could potentially also be this, and we want to make fun of it because it's like this is very clearly a Switch ripoff, right? But I know that these things work. I know that, you know, these portable devices that allow us to play games, you know, wherever, um, especially if they're PC games, like this is, these things, they sometimes work. 
uh, like I said, my, my NVIDIA Shield is amazing. The only reason I don't use it now is because it doesn't really fill it. There's no need for it right now. I have a Switch. I can, I have Steam Link on my phone, right? So I don't really need to be able to play on a, on a controller, uh, a, you know, on a, NVIDIA Shield portable. Uh, those things sell for a fortune on Amazon. Do they really? I'm gonna have to make, I'm gonna write that down on my list of, I have a list of things I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna add that to it. <laughs> NVIDIA Shield, yeah. I'm trying to get rid of some stuff, man. I gotta sell this stuff. Get it, get it out of here. Get it out of here. Get it. Buy some more lights. Buy some more. Let me let me sell something for five hundred dollars and buy like th three nano leaf lights or something. <laughs> Pay for that new TV. That's right. Yeah. So this, I mean, this. I wish I was at CES because I would have actually loved to sit down and play with this thing because I think that this, you know, this this type of like tablet size portable handheld gaming uh, is just so good. The Switch was awesome. The, the NVIDIA Shield was awesome. The NVIDIA uh, Shield tablet, uh, I've heard, is fantastic. There's there's just so much, um, you know, basically larger than a Game Boy screen or larger than your phone screen type gaming that just works so well uh, as as just a, you know, oh, I'm going on a trip. I'm going to take this thing with me and I'm going to play games. Like, it fucking works. It just works. And so, yeah, something like this, personally, I'm sure it's going to be super expensive. And judging by the controllers... Not a final build, of course, this is a concept, uh, but judging by the controllers, it's clear that you're not going to have a very comfortable two-player experience <laughs> at all, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I wish I was there to check it out for myself. I mean, look at it. It's, it looks huge, but honestly, I feel like this person might have small hands. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, actually, wait, it's an eight-inch screen, uh, roughly the size of an iPad mini. It's a lot larger than the Nintendo Switch, which has a 6.2-inch. Okay, so it is a little bit larger. I still think she has small hands, but, um... But yeah, it's, 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 I would, I would totally, I would totally play this. Absolutely. It does feel, I, you know, I wonder, I wonder if this person does have small hands though. I mean, it's a, it's an eight inch screen. It's a lot larger than Nintendo Switch. Like maybe actually, no, maybe, uh, those are normal size hands and this thing really is massive and I would be totally okay with it. As long as it's not like crazy heavy, but still. Dargo says the two side controllers can be put together to make a single. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think there's a picture of that actually in this article. Um, it shows the slide out. Yeah, here it is right here. So you actually see that they do they do slide out and they form a controller. Uh, but like like I said, one of the one of the benefits to the switch is being able to slide the joy cons out and have a two player it does look like a dreamcast controller <laughs> and have a two player uh, uh you know experience but but you know in this case you know that's obviously not gonna happen. Um but yes the, obviously they're gonna have a dock they're gonna do all this stuff. So so Personally, as silly as it looks, and as much of a ripoff, it's like, oh, it's a freaking Switch ripoff, whatever. Personally, I am looking forward to, to, to demoing this at some point, somewhere, I don't know where, or at least reading reviews about it when it actually launches. Um, well, a little blue light, red light, oh, that's kind of cool, I guess. I don't know what you would need that for, but uh, yeah. So uh, it says UFOs, da, 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 and the Switch is in their size and weight, so. Yep, iPhone 11. And then display is sharper than the Switch's 1900 by 1200 resolution. Switch's tablet is 1280 by 720, which is why you get better resolution uh, when you're in handheld mode versus when you put it in your on your TV. Uh, you get like 60 frames per second on your handheld, but then you put it on TV and, and you get down to like 30 frames per second. Some games get worse for some reason. Um, the thing that could make this work well is the Alienware could combine this with their external video card system to make it Uber Dock. Damn, Saren. You should apply. <laughs> you should apply. <laughs> go just go straight to Dell and just go straight to the top. And just tell them, hey, put me in, put me in, coach. Uh, but yeah, that's a I mean, that's a great idea. They already have their uh, what is it like? They, initially, they're like Thunderbolt cards, but I think they're obviously not Thunderbolt now. It's um probably USB C or something. But yeah, having a you know, an external video card dock and then being able to plug this into it, I mean, that just seems like a super fucking win. Be able to play your games like that. Um, now obviously, uh, handheld gaming. Is going to be continue to be a big thing. The Switch has pretty much like proven to people who are not us that <laughs> that people like playing handheld games. You know, like we've always had the Game Boy, we've always had the DS, we've had Game Gear and and, and the PS Vita, uh, and people who have those devices typically tend to enjoy them. And then the Switch comes out and basically mainstreams the the mobile you know handheld gaming besides like you know your phone uh, uh, type of uh, uh, of gameplay. And now everybody is jumping on board. So there's another thing here. I don't know if you guys saw this, but this is the Razer Kishi. The Razer Kishi, such a weird name, uh, is 
basically a and and yes, I agree to your policy. I did. I agree to those yesterday, bitch. Um, but all it is is basically a controller contraption that goes on the outside of your phone. So you'll have your phone, and then you'll just boop boop, and then there we go. Uh, is it Kishi? It might be Kishi. Uh, so the. <laughs> There has already been something like this that uh, Logitech put out, and then they discontinued. Uh, I don't remember what it was called, but I remember seeing it at like a Best Buy or something like that. And I really should have got it because it definitely seemed like a cool addition to like your phone. But I wasn't playing phone games at the time. Um, the kimchi—that's why I call it kishi because it sounds like it sounds like some delicious food. <laughs> the kimchi. Uh, so the you have one. It's a power. It's a power what? But it's a controller that holds the phone. Yes. And so that's what this is. Oh, you have a controller that holds the phone. No, I'm talking about one that looks exactly like this where it goes on the sides. So let me uh, let me find the... There's a video here that actually demonstrates the... Uh, you can see the back side of this thing. So... Oh, God. So here we go. He's going to turn around for a minute. So you can see how it mounts to your phone. You can see it's basically just a... It's just a strap. Just a little strap kind of locks into place and then it will, uh, and then we'll go and turn that off. I was wondering what that sound was in the background. Um, but he'll show you, he's going to take it apart here in a second. Just super easy. Let's take it apart. Cake. And then you can play, yeah, I guess you could play it as like a, use like a small controller or something. But I mean, this little device looks awesome. There's no price point anywhere. It's basically just notifying me when, you know, when, you know, they, they release more information. Uh, but yeah, it's it's basically just supposed to allow you to play games on your phone. Now, if you have any kind of mobile device right now, you can probably download. Uh, you could probably download. What is it? Uh, Steam Link, and then play your games on your phone. I actually use uh, I use a small adapter that is just like a little plastic adapter that just kind of goes like up and around your uh, your uh, your Xbox controller, and it kind of clamps on, and then it has a little mount, and then you just put your phone right there, and it looks just like my. My it looks exactly like my uh, Nvidia Shield portable, um, but it allows me to then I can fire up my Steam Link and then I can just basically play games that way because my Xbox uh, One controller connects to the phone via Bluetooth, so it just just works. Uh, here is how to how to use slip it up accidentally if it's just a strap. So it does it does wrap around the the top end there, and actually we'll go back to this video so you could get a better idea. Uh, but it does wrap around. Let me see. Does he actually show putting it on? No, he just kind of talks about it here. But here he'll take it off. Um, there's a plug on one side, but you could see that there's a lip. You could kind of see that there's a lip where the phone would actually slide in. So there's no, I mean, unless, I guess, unless that strap or whatever, like, comes loose or that locking mechanism in the back comes loose, I, uh, I can't imagine it just falling out of your hands. I mean, maybe it's possible. Maybe if you're holding it and you just, and you're just like, oh, damn, maybe you're playing a game and you're like, oh, dang, you, you're accidentally pulling it apart and the phone just falls and just falls on the ground. But, uh, I can, Im I can't imagine that they made it that easy. But I, I guess as I mentioned, you there are things like this already on Amazon. We just haven't seen a company like Razer pick it up and uh, and really run with it. Like we there's so there's a wide variety of things on Amazon basically for you know for this or for anything. Like, like I said, I got the clamps. They're like ten dollars for two. You just put a clamp on your on your controller, then sync it to your phone, and then ta da! Now you have a mobile gaming system. Uh, that seems fundamentally flawed with the range of phone wits out there. So yeah, I guess that's the other thing. Uh, I don't know how they're, they man, they they want to uh, they're going to tackle the issue of having. But mute that because last time we played a promo video, it got flagged on YouTube. Thank you, Sony, for not using cleared music. Uh, so yeah, it's just basically going to show how it functions on on whatever phone device they put in there. Uh, I can imagine because most phones are within a certain range in terms of size, that it probably will scale for some of that. But I, I don't have the answer to that right now, honestly. There's not a lot of information. There's not. Um, it looks like it only stretches one way. Yeah, so I, I'm wondering if inside of that pocket, you know, inside of that pocket that they have, if it's just wide enough where it will will support a variety of different sizes. Or maybe they have inserts or something. I have no idea. Inserts would be weird. <laughs> but I guess if you only have one phone for a certain period of time, it won't hurt to have inserts in. If they release a new Razer phone, and it only fits that. Hmm... Speaking of, not really, but uh, <laughs> next up, uh, in the VR space, actually. Now, this is pretty cool. I don't know if you guys play any VR, but we know that VR headsets are going to get smaller. They're going to get lighter. They're going to get, you know, I mean, as, as we get closer to the future, which is all the time, uh, things are just going to get smaller and more compact. 
more streamlined. And this is the coolest VR, functional VR headset. Yes, Halestis, it is the Panasonic Steampunk goggle, VR goggles. Now, the biggest complaint that, that people had when trying this uh, is that it is very forward heavy. So people were having issues with it staying, it wasn't staying on the bridge of their nose and it was kind of falling off constantly and they had to adjust it. But that's something that could be, I mean, that could be solved with a strap, I mean, just a head strap or something. Um, or maybe better, you know, ear things, right? So there's a number of ways that they could probably, you know, solve that. But, you know, they, they use o- OLED uh, screens in each one. It, it Apparently, it really does work and it works well. It supports HDR. Uh, and yeah, I mean, visually... Yeah, they they look sick compared to. I mean, look at like every system that we have right now. That it's just like it's like a shoebox on your face. You know, like it's such a huge difference visually. Um, not that anybody once you're in VR, like you shouldn't really care what people think you look like. Even you know, even though you might look ridiculous. Um, but it's the convenience of not having to carry something so ridiculously massive uh, on your head with like all the cables and everything. Sucks for anyone that needs glasses. Yes, this definitely does suck for anyone that needs glasses. But I wonder if they'll have inserts. I didn't, actually, you know, I should look that up. I don't wear glasses anymore, so I don't look that stuff up. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's see. Prescription. Uh, no mention of prescription in there, huh? RX. RX. No, nothing. Yikes. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if they actually have any. Oh, there's basically nothing here. Let's go to. Let's go to um, the Verge. Oh, here's somebody wearing them right here. It looks like a like a mad scientist stuff. It looks fucking cool, man. Like, this looks really cool. I wonder if they actually said anything. Did they say prescription? Nope. I wonder if the comments said anything. Prescription? Nope. No one cares. No, everyone's got LASIK. No one cares about glasses anymore. Uh, <laughs> then we got my VR, <laughs> my VR contacts. Yeah. I need to wear contacts before I do VR. That is such a cool, it's such a cool device. Uh, it looks like, <laughs> like Ozzy Osbourne. That's right. VR Ozzy Osbourne. Um, like a, the Thin Man in XCOM. It, yeah, it, it has a look to it. It has a look, but I mean, comparatively speaking, like, I wish I had my, my VR headsets right there, but I mean, like, you guys know what a VR headset looks like. It's, it's fucking massive. It's huge. Uh, and so, yeah, having to have, you're just basically putting on two, basically two glasses or, you know, a, a gl- pair of glasses, like a couple pieces of glass. Like, that's so much better. <clears throat> so I really hope that, that something like this actually, uh, maybe spurs, you know, innovation in making things a little bit more compact more quickly uh obviously this is ces so this is stuff that we're not going to see you know anytime soon uh even if it says coming in 2020 now we're not going to see this 2020 <laughs> we won't see it uh but yeah people are saying it's a better image quality better form factor the only problem is that it falls forward now actually i don't know if they even mentioned it here i was reading another article uh that was re- that was reviewing their their first uh, look at this and they specifically noted oh uh, here we go right here uh, the glasses were also a little front heavy and slid down my nose whenever I tilted forward. This wasn't helped by the cables running directly out of the eyepieces to the game PC. Yes, yeah, so that's a problem too. So, I mean, these are things that I, I feel like they could fix, you know, strap on the back and then run the cables out the back, like, like, like every headset does. Uh, that would be ideal. You were concerned about limit FOV. Uh, that was mentioned somewhere. Oh, whoa, not here, huh? God, where, who mentioned it? I I read or maybe it was a video or something like that. Um, but somebody said that the FOV was good. I don't really have any comparison though. <laughs> because, and his main reason why is because it's the, the, the actual screens are so close to your eyes. So they just said, yeah, it was really good. Was like, okay. So it was probably a video or something. Uh, so yeah, that was, uh, no, 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 no. Probably the coolest VR thing that came out. And usually CS is like jam packed with VR stuff. I have a friend that's at CS right now and he sent me like, uh, oh, probably like 20 different messages. It's all video. Every time he goes to, to CES, he sends me a bunch of videos and I have to go through and flip through. Usually he finds me some pretty good stuff that's like related, like photography or video games or something like that. Um, but I haven't watched it yet. Uh, good could be anything from 65 to 180 FOV, depending on the person. I know. And I was on the verge too. So fuck it. Who knows what that means? <laughs> <laughs> who knows uh all right so the next thing this is uh um you know whenever you go to ces you always see stuff that like you wonder what what is like what what niche is this thing trying to fill like what 
where does this belong in, in our lives? And this is one of those things that it's like, wow, that's really cool. What problem does it solve? And that is the Intel Nook Ghost Canyon. It's got a skull on it, so you guys can know that this shit is hardcore. It's just crazy. Look at the look at the skull. It's just serious. It's serious. So the Intel Nook is, and let me actually see if I get to the video here. I can show you guys. This guy is actually go through and he's gonna tear it apart. Now I know this is the verge, and you guys are on the edge of your seats right now, whether or not this is gonna work, but but he does take it apart. <laughs> that's all we need for him to do. Just take it apart. Putting it together, that's another thing. Uh, but yes, you can see right here, the biggest, the biggest selling point of this device that is only like, like five liters in size. Is basically, it's like, it's like, I mean, I don't know how to really compare it for you guys, but it's like a shoebox, right? Um, is that the entire computer part is on that card. So if you remember, what was that sound? Uh, if you were... If you remember the, uh, sorry, I heard a sound that I don't normally hear when I'm streaming. Uh, anyway, so if you remember the daughter board set up from like the eighties, right? Remember when computers, some of you guys are like, what? Uh, computers used to have basically a lot of their com computational stuff, right? On what's called a daughter board. And that plugged into the motherboard. That's where the term, the motherboard came from. Right. Um, and so the piece the, the I think it was like the Ram and the, the, the processor and all that stuff sat on a daughter board. And then you plug that into the motherboard. Um, God, has this been so long? I might be wrong about this. But anyways, uh, this is kind of that same concept where, you know, he's holding a core i9 ninth gen uh, processor and also, I believe, the RAM and also the card slots for the, uh, uh, the M.2, NVMe, whatever. Uh, it ends up working, yeah, like an external GPU enclosure. So, when you look at the configuration of this thing, it seems like, wow, that's really cool. I could get like a whole PC in this tiny little box, and they're pitching it as you can then later on turn around and uh, swap out just the processing card, right? And that, and then you can upgrade by putting putting another one in. And that just, that's the part that just seems ridiculous to me because how often are you upgrading your, your processor and motherboard that you feel like you need to make it that much more convenient? This product is good for schools? I don't think, hmm. Uh, a street PC inside your, yeah, there you go. Just for the lulls, just put it inside. <laughs> just a nice little heating element inside of your thing. So here's the, here's the card where everything plugs into. There's basically nothing on this thing as he's pointing out. Uh, it's just basically one slot for your, uh, for your graphics card and another slot for the, um, uh, for the actual processing unit. The, uh, there is a limit in size. I think it's like eight inches or something, uh, uh that you can put excuse me, inside because of this amount of space that's available to them. So you're not even going to be able to put like the fattest video card that you could find in this thing because obviously you're going to be limited by size. Um, they have, I think it has a, was it a 500 watt, uh, basically has a power supply that's going to be more than enough to run whatever you slap in it. The, the system of the way things are kind of aligned here doesn't really feel like it's very friendly for like, for like airflow, but that's something that I'm sure that people will point out later. Uh, maybe there'll be a bigger version in the future with more slots. You can add more CPUs and GPUs if you need, <laughs> like a PC. <laughs> Ready to show another enclosure that fit the Nook in and a full desktop GPU. Yeah. Oh, I did see that actually. Um, this was the one that that I ended up putting it in, putting into uh, the news here. But I did see that. Uh, I wonder if that's actually in this article somewhere, or at least somewhere around. Uh, but yeah, it is a super small enclosure that allows you to swap out just, you know, whenever you're just like, Hey, you know, it's time to upgrade my computer. I'm just going to go spend some money to go and buy another, you know, thing. If you're wondering how much it costs, I know you're wondering like, well, how much does that cost? It's probably super affordable, right? Well, let's go ahead and go to, uh, go to this, uh, site here and take a look here. The Intel Nook Ghost Canyon customized by Simply Nook. So this is uh, all the details that you want. You can see it, you could put an i7, i5, or i9 in the, in the device, and they're all come on their own little separate cards, right? Um, you can start this at $1199 for an i5, 
twelve ninety nine for an i seven or seventeen ninety ninety nine for a fully configured i nine. Eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory, a whole eight, 128 gigabyte SSD, and a free OS installation. Shipping March. Um, what a slamming deal. Let's go ahead and customize this for a minute, right? We got a second. Let me see. So eight gigabytes of RAM. I don't really feel like that's enough for what I got to do. 32 is what I run right now. So let's go and plug that in. Okay, great. Uh, M.2 storage option. Definitely going to need more than 128 gigabytes. I have a super old M.2 and I think it has 256. So I don't understand where they're even finding 128 at this point in time. So let's just go ahead and say I'm going to need a little bit more. I'll say 512. 512 is pretty good. Uh, let's see. No OS. Not recommended. Windows 10 Home, Windows 10 Pro. Let's just pretend that I only need Home for a minute. Let me say M.2 secondary storage option. We're going to want a secondary storage for something. Let's go with a small one. 256. A graphics card. Let me see. Uh, we want a good graphics card. Card, but not too good because we can't really afford it, right? Let's do a 2060. Uh, let me see. Warranty. Nah, we don't need a warranty. We'll skip that part. HDMI port accessories. This is HDMI mail to VGL. These are just accessories. Two foot HDMI cable. I'm not going to spend that money on that stuff. We're not gonna, we wouldn't actually do that. Thunderbolt port accessories. Eh. 3.1 port accessories. Eh. USB OS. Nah. It's fine. Where are we at right now? 2788. 2788. And then think about it, guys. In, in a couple years, you could just swap out. The whole, the, this whole thing, basically, and just upgrade a new one, just slide a new one in there, and just throw the other one away. Slam and deal. <laughs> this is crazy. Now, I'm, now, keep in mind, I'm, I'm on a, uh, uh, I guess I'm on like a third party site, like configuring all this stuff, but, but the actual price point uh, for the base unit is the same. Like, like that was the price point that was mentioned in the article. Uh, it was $11.99, $14.15.99, and then $17.99. Um, but man, you need to buy your warranty. Well, they have an extended one year warranty that's free, but if you want to add anything else, then you have to pay for it. And honestly, a five year warranty for a hundred bucks on a gen one item. Like I, personally, if I'm going to spend 2788 on a piece of technology, I'm going to spend next to a hundred dollars on, on the warranty, especially a five year warranty. So, so I don't know what they cover, but I'm guessing they'll fix something. So personally, I would say that's a pretty good deal. Uh, five years for a hundred bucks. What's not a good deal and where all the actual profit margins coming from is everything else <laughs> that it's on there. Oh man. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, disrupting the game industry. The most disappointing thing is there's comments similar to those listed above just without the S. Oh yeah, just people are just really into it. Yeah, I don't know, man. I can't see this being a... I can't... Because I don't see what problem this solves... Outside of just, you know, I want a smaller computer. I can't see what this does for anybody. You know, like, when you talk about, like, different size motherboards, like ATX, uh, the MATX or whatever, then, like, you know, the, the, what is, I can't remember the other ones. But, you know, you have different size boards. Like, you have options. It makes sense. It's like, oh, you know, what? I need to get a larger board because I need to have more slots. I need more whatever. Uh like that kind of stuff makes sense. But then when you get past a certain point and it's just like, you know what? ITX. Yeah. You get past a certain point and you're just like, you know what? Just get, just, just, just get like a, I don't know, fucking portable iPad or something for a surface pro or something, but you're not gonna play games on, it, I guess, but fuck man, even a laptop is cheaper than this. A gaming laptop is cheaper than this. And at least you have the portability. I don't know. I just don't see a market for this. I can't imagine this is going to do anything other than generate headlines. Personally, I have alerts are off, but thank you so much if you're not here at the end of the show. Uh, it's kind of nice for that juice for carrying in your backpack. <sighs> so you could have a uh, you could have a backpack and then run the uh, um, your VR straight from your backpack. Ooh, easy. And then you just they just have a power cable <laughs> just running to your backpack, and that's it. So easy. My gaming laptop was fifteen hundred, although that was like six seven years ago. Yeah, my um. My laptop was 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 more than that, but it's lasted me eight years, so I can't really complain. I still use it, so uh, yeah, it, it, it's I, I something like this. Like I just can't, I can't, I don't, I don't see, I don't understand, I don't understand. Nah, I don't get it. I don't get. It. I don't think anyone's gonna buy it. I honestly don't think anyone's gonna buy it. I tried to buy a used Mac Mini and install Boot Camp on it. There you go. <laughs> a live stream rig? No, because why would you spend twenty eight hundred bucks on a live stream rig when you could just you could build two machines? For that price, with good gear, like you can have a stream PC and a uh, and a gaming PC for that price, and that's a thing. It's just, it just, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, 
So, before the show, we were talking a little bit about monitor hertz. Monitor hertz? Refresh rates on monitors. Uh, and, you know, I, I said that we were going to talk a little bit about that today. And we are, because NVIDIA has a new breakthrough design for their G-Sync eSports displays that function at 360 hertz. 360 hertz. The NVIDIA 360. <laughs> the G-Sync 360. I don't know what they're going to call it. Uh, but yes, uh, for those of you guys who have already been poisoned by the 144 hertz trend, which is fine, um, I will not subject myself to that because I don't want to poison myself. That's, <laughs> this is what the, this is the next thing you have to look forward to. Um, I don't know what the cost is. I didn't actually look to see what the cost was on this because I was, I just looked at the, the refresh rate and I was just like, <laughs> like what the hell? Uh, head here and see, head here to see and try the demo. How would we actually see a demo for uh, uh, a frame rate 30? Yeah, but I can't see, I can't see three, this is it 360. Uh, oh, well, look how smooth it is. Can you guys tell the difference? <laughs> Let's see, this one's 60. Let's see. Uh, Exactly the same. Look at that. Of course. I don't know. I guess it's the demo if you, if you actually have the monitor, perhaps. Let's go and click, turn that off. Uh, that's a really cool uh, site, actually, though. I don't want to remember that. Um, it's laggy for you. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Close enough. Close enough. Uh, so, yeah, it's supposed to be, as it says, uh, it's supposed to be for esports. But, you know, esports is the new uh, gamer. Right. So when, when you think about over the past, you know, several years, when something comes out and it's like, oh, it's the gamer chair. Right. It's like, oh, shit, it's a gamer chair. Well, esports is the new that now it's going to be, oh, this this thing is esports ready. And that's what they're going to be pitching. And so this is probably one of the biggest the first biggest things I've seen where it's like they're really pushing that esports thing instead of. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Esports fuel. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there's. There, uh, gamer adds fifty dollars price tag, but esports adds like one hundred and fifty at least, at least. So three hundred and sixty hertz, powered by NVIDIA G Sync for all of you guys out there who are playing Fortnite at three hundred and sixty frames per second. This is for you. It's not a gamer thing. Let's has RGB. Oh God, I don't think it does. But also, I don't think it hardly has a bezel, so I don't know where they'd put it. <laughs> it does. Oh, it does. It does have a bezel. Oh yeah, it does. They. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. Although that's gamer ready, not esports ready, I don't think. Uh, this is wild. Three hundred. I don't even know what that would look like. I can't imagine. I feel like, I mean, at sixty frames per second, I feel like things are fine. Anything more than that, and I've seen one hundred twenty hertz because uh, your 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 Apple phones have that, and I think probably a lot of your guys' Android phones probably support one hundred twenty hertz. So I know what that looks like. Um, but three hundred sixty, I don't even know. Your toothbrush is an esports ready? I know! Those Asus monitors usually have RGB at the base of the stand and in the back of the panel. Yeah, on the back of the panel, that makes sense because it illuminates the, uh, the wall uh, behind you. But, uh, but, but facing you, I mean, I don't know. There's, there are a few things where like RGB just doesn't really make sense for just like your average you know, player. Like the RGB uh, on the headphones. I don't really understand why people would really, really need that. Especially when on most wireless headphones, it actually uses the battery quite a bit. So uh, 144 is worth it, but past that, I don't know. Well, the good news is that if there is an eSports ready 360 hertz monitor coming out, uh, well, we might actually get a drop in price on all the 144 hertz stuff. Maybe. Maybe. Um, you know what? That's actually all I have for CES. For CES. Done. What do we move to next? Well, God, we're not even good. Well, let's do this. Let's talk about Twitch for a second. Just, just one, just one quick Twitch article. And this one's, this one's uh, mildly alarming. Mildly alarming. Uh, so first off, we're not going to talk about Destiny getting banned. We already know that's a uh, that, that that there's. Not a a balance in the way the Twitch moderation team works, so it's really difficult to go to talk about this and then try to say, "Hey, support Twitch." <laughs> no, not Destiny the game. Shut the fuck up. Uh, so, in a recent report yesterday, uh, day after yesterday, uh, Amazon reported that Twitch is not meeting their ad revenue expectations. Now, keep in mind, Twitch just launched 
it's um picture in picture advertising, right? So the ads will run picture in picture. Uh, I know that a lot of us run ad block, myself included. Uh, you can actually see right here. I always have ad block on when I'm doing a show because I don't want ads like the one that's in the upper right corner here that's trying to play. I don't want that shit to play during a show. Um, but, you know, for for a site like Twitch, if you like Twitch overall, I know that we have our gripes, myself included, about how Twitch operates and some of the things they do, specifically with their moderation team. Um at the same time, I still want them to stay around. And I don't think Amazon's going to do anything with them anytime soon because this is not Twitch is losing money. This is they just didn't meet their revenue, the revenue model they put out, right? Uh, so it says right here that uh, financial says only translated into a modest $230 million ad revenue for 2018 and a mid-year annual projection for $300 million for 2019. But they were hoping to see ad revenues between 500 and 600 million in 2019 with the service eventually hitting $1 billion. So Amazon had had this idea that they were going to go from uh, you know, from 230 million to 1 billion soon. Uh, again, this is not about them not being profitable. It's about them just not meeting whatever lofty goals they, they put out. And we've seen this before where like, remember when the first Tomb Raider reboot came out and uh, they were saying that they didn't meet their sales uh, expectations. And this has happened a lot of times. That's the first one that pops in my brain, right? Um, I think that when they made that report saying that Tomb Raider was basically a failure, even though it was profitable because it didn't meet their, um, you know, their lofty goals, uh, it had like 2.7 million sales, which 2.7 million is a good number. Like this was like 2014 or 15 or something like that. Like that was a good number, but it wasn't good enough for the publisher. So this is always happening where we, and we have an article here now that kind of shines a negative light on Twitch saying, Hey, they're not meeting ad revenue expectations. Well, maybe lower your fucking expectations. People are still going to use ad block, especially if the ads suck or if they're intrusive uh the new system of having picture in picture that's gonna help uh, tremendously uh everybody who uses it loves it it basically if you haven't seen it it's kind of like what, what you're viewing right now on my screen but it, but instead i think it would actually take um it would take mm, the video let's say if we're like this and this is what you're watching it would take the video and put it up here so up here would be the video and then the rest of the screen kind of like this would be the ad and then it would basically swap back and just like that so it's it's a it's a system that is a huge step and a huge improvement uh, over what it was previously where it just took over the video and you don't get to watch anything. Um, I should also remind you guys that there is a thing called Twitch Turbo, which I, I think people just forgot existed. Twitch Turbo is uh, basically YouTube Red. Yeah, it's YouTube Red, but for Twitch, uh, where you can have an ad-free experience across the entire site and not just on you know the person that you're subscribed to you know, they're on their channel. Um, it is $5 a month. Uh, they changed that. Mm, are you sure? Not. I remember they changed it. So that way your sub doesn't make things ad free like a year and a half ago or something. But I want to say a Twitch turbo still. Yeah. The Amazon prime. Yeah. Amazon prime chain. That's right. Um, and they made it a separate, I've got a, is my shit dated? Maybe my shit's dated. Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. This is why I have co-hosts. Twitch Turbo. Let's see. Twitch Turbo Guide. Bam. Here we go. We're on the help.twitch site. Twitch Turbo Guide. Twitch is a monthly service program offered exclusively to Twitch.tv with the following benefits. Ad-free viewing across Twitch. Expanded emoticon set. Custom chat username colors. Chat badge. Extended broadcast storage. And priority customer support. Is this old? <laughs> Did they not update this? I'm fairly certain this is still a thing. Um, let's see. Let's go to twitch.tv. It's turbo. It's still there. So yeah, no, it is a thing. So ad-free viewing with limited exceptions. Watching with turbo means no pre-rolls, no mid-rolls, no companions, and no display ads. You may still be presented promotions with ads that are embedded into the broadcast or in rare situations delivered with certain simulcast, uh, simulcast uh, content. 
So basically, yeah. So there you go. So it, it is still a thing. I remember that they did a, a separation because Amazon Prime was supposed to offer ad-free viewing experience. And then I guess they realized that was too good of a deal. And so that's what basically they started pushing Twitch Turbo. So anyways, yeah. So Twitch Turbo uh, is... You know, if you want to continue supporting the platform, I know you guys are supporting, you know, creators, right? Whether it be myself or somebody else. Uh, but if you want to support the platform directly, you could do that by going to Twitch Turbo. And uh, it's like $5 and you get ad-free viewing everywhere. Personally, I think I need to get this. I mean, I, I sub to people that I don't watch, <laughs> uh, like, ever. Uh, so and maybe I should go ahead and cut one to support the other. And at least at this with this, I could watch without having ads, period. Um... It's eight ninety nine for you in Canada. Oh damn! Uh, what is it? I give them enough money with them taking fifty percent of the subs, and that's fine. I mean, that's totally fine. I'm only bringing this up because you know this is it's a bad look. It's a bad look when you when you have articles like this on Forbes that says Amazon's Twitch is just not meeting ad revenue expectations. I think a, a smart person will look at this and say, "Well, what was their expectations? Was it stupid?" Yes, it was. Well, then. <laughs> but there are people out there who are gonna you know look at this and say, "Oh wow, Twitch is dying." Twitch is dying. Uh, they are slipping a little bit. I want to say they only have, uh, according to Streamlabs report, 75% of the streamer, uh, I guess the streamer base, right? Um, which is less than what they obviously had before because there was no competition back in 2017, 2018, really. Uh, YouTube is second with like, I think they're in the teens in terms of uh, uh, percentage. Uh, and then after that is Mixer and Facebook are tied. And then beyond that, I guess the rest pretty much just don't exist. So, um, so yeah, Twitch is still pretty much dominating the uh, the market, and they're just not, but they're just not meeting the uh, expectations. And they say a lot of their money actually comes from product, which is uh, which for Twitch is the subs. So they say a lot of their revenue is actually coming from uh, from sub money. So that dream of Twitch coming out and saying, hey, you know what? We're going to take a smaller cut. We're going to take a smaller cut. Uh, that's not going to happen because <laughs> that's like pretty much the only money that they're making. Um, Twitch cuts, uh, uh, Twitch takes cuts of all subs. I wouldn't support Turbo as the double dip that it is. Really? I mean, if it's site wide. So personally, I don't watch like, I, I watch like a random person. Like I just kind of scroll through and just watch like a random person, right? Um, and it sucks when you're like, when you're just surfing different channels and you're getting fed ads, like every other channel, it's like, I just want to pop in and see what this person's doing. Right. So if it doesn't fit your style in terms of how you navigate Twitch, then don't get it. Just support the person directly. Like I just do it. Yeah. Um, but for someone like me who, you know, I just, I basically just like, I like YouTube, YouTube, I'll go from video to video to video. Like, I don't care who the creators are half the time. I just want to look for information. And for Twitch, it's kind of like, yeah, I want to go to IRL and just see who's the drunkest. <laughs> and sometimes I don't have the patience to wait for 30 seconds <laughs> for that thing to finish to see how drunk this person is. What was that? One guy, one time there was a guy who was so wasted. He was licking dirty mini blinds for, for, uh, for donations. But that was the trade. Yeah, so he, takes, he took donos and he was basically licking dirty mini blinds. Um, but I wouldn't have found that. <laughs> I did find that, but I don't have turbo right now, so I did find that without, uh, without ads. But uh, yeah, so it is, uh, uh, you, could find, you could find all kinds of stuff, and I feel like you could find so much more if you had Twitch Turbo, but that's totally up to you guys. I don't, I'm not trying to sell it. Just support me directly. Just support me. That's totally fine. I'm okay with that. Or support somebody else that you appreciate. That's fine, too. Uh, support your stream with a sub. Get rid of ads for yourself with Turbo. There you go. Uh, and you would pay to watch that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Did you see your pre-roll ad on Twitch channel before? What is it? No, 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 no. Uh, Mixer 2020. Oh, God. Well, I don't want to say that. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, you see, that's one weird-ass rabbit hole you fell through. Yeah, I always find weird stuff in IRL. I don't know why. Uh, and or just chatting, I should say. Um, there, cause, probably, probably because there's always weird stuff. Just chatting actually has uh, increased like s some stupid percentages. Actually, I think it's in this article. Let me pull it up real quick. Uh, let me see. Just oops. Okay, wow. Really found that. Just here it is. Just chatting. Category rising forty two percent to six hundred fifty one million in total hours in two thousand nineteen. So just chatting. The category that we're in right now has increased by 42%. This is, oh, you can't see it. But anyways, just trust me. Uh, this is after 
they did the split where they had like all of these new, you know, remember just chatting basically, what was it? I think it was like IRL and it also had like creative people in it and music and all that stuff. Like there was a time when there really was just games and then one that was like not games. Uh, and so I think it was like maybe 2016 or something like that. So the just chatting category, which is now technically, you know, sharing uh uh people with so many other categories there's like gaming news shows right and all that stuff um has still seen a growth of 42 percent body painting also increased body painting has increased i envy all these all these teenage boys who just have easy access to material man when i was a kid i had to use mervin's catalog or something like that if i got my hands on a on a fredericks of hollywood catalog ooh, mm. It's over. It was over. It's done. Ditching school for that. So <laughs> it's so easy to get material nowadays. God. Backwoods magazines. Mine was in the desert. <laughs> like it really was. Out in the middle of the desert. There was a stash. It was like a it was like a bum stash, man. It was a huge mountain of just dirty magazines. And you know, all your friends would go out there and just be like, I'm just gonna take this one home. Sears catalog. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh let's see in other news and we're just gonna kind of we're just gonna kind of just briefly talk about this um but you should know that these things are happening um so first off pretty much everybody at funny or die was laid off recently um i know it's not gaming specifically but most all of you guys know funny or die college humor um they basically had to let go of everybody because the parent company, I guess, couldn't pay for anything anymore for whatever, but none of that matters, right? They weren't making, they weren't making any money. And the reason they weren't making any money is because sometime, some years ago, I, uh, there was a push for content to move from YouTube to Facebook and Facebook was trying to entice content creators like Funny or Die slash College Humor. Um, <laughs> at least if we answer the question, that's pretty funny. <laughs> it's a Funny or Die. Um, but Facebook actually fabricated their metrics, inflated their metrics in order to entice people to make the shift and create video on their platform. And then when they actually made the shift, uh, they ended up you know, obviously experiencing that there was like no content, like wh wh there's no, there's no viewership. Uh, Facebook actually had to pay for this. So they were found guilty and they had to pay $40 million, which is 0.2% of their annual earnings. It's a huge slap, huge slap on the wrist, like a, like a big one, like a, like a, like a, ah, 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 just nothing basically. The reason why they had to pay $40 million was they had to pay back the advertisers that they had effectively lied to. Um, not effectively, that they lied to. This payment, this $40 million has nothing to do with the people that they brought over to their platform with the promise that, hey, you know, you, you could thrive here just like you could on YouTube. Look at these numbers. It's amazing. You could make all kinds of money here. Uh, has nothing this 40 million dollars does not cover that at all this is purely to pay back the people who pay for advertising i know this is like i mean here's the thing too like nobody here is going to be like oh stop talking about facebook like that no one's going to say that shit <laughs> like no one's, we recognize that facebook is the next big evil right we have plenty of articles that have come out that have shown uh not even i should say articles but plenty of things that have come out that have shown uh that you know facebook has plans that are not necessarily in line with uh, with anything that has any kind of integrity. I it was a, Facebook needs to go. Yeah, it's just uh, let's go back to MySpace. Yeah, and and you know when they could when they could do things like this, and the repercussions are what? Well, uh, you know, a company like Funny or Die uh, or sorry, College Humor ends up basically going under, um, or the Funny or Die folks at least, uh, and all they get is a forty million dollar to pay back the advertisers and that's it. Like they can afford to just keep doing this. Geo City's just in the back, just 
just waiting, just biding their time. To like, oh, here we go, here we go. Are you surprised about these things from a company that is owned by a backstabber? I'm not surprised about any of this stuff, man. Um, I'm not surprised at all. I, you know, I want to talk about it because you know this is a big deal, right? Like this is, you you may not like Funny or Die or college humor stuff or whatever, but what if this was Bon Appetit? I know you guys love you some Claire. I know you guys love you some Brad, but what the fuck? Wouldn't you be mad if they made the switch to Facebook and then they ended up dissolving because they weren't getting any views and it was too late to, to fix the brand and shift back? That would be upsetting. But that is, I mean, that is what Funny or Die was. It was huge. You bet you, who? Who? <laughs> Listen, if you don't know who Claire is from the Bon Appetit Test Kitchen, then we are not friends. Okay? Uh, I'm all teased. I don't know who they are, so I don't care. Oh, man. Claire, thank you. Thank you, Kimmy. Finally. Finally, my co-host comes, comes, comes to terms. Yes. Yes. Of temper chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's our art nemesis ah oh, not the temper chocolate uh brad is how i would imagine someone at 10 cappuccinos would be like yeah no it's uh <laughs> but i mean I, I can't i can't think how about how about hot ones right you guys know hot ones so the hot ones show the you know the the show where you even hot hot wings and even hotter questions or Maybe that's reversed, but, uh, huh? Huh? What is it? Who are these fucking boomers in my chat? God damn. <laughs> Listen, it's taking something that people like and ruining it by lying. That's what Facebook did. You guys are being dicks. <laughs> Ramsey was in that. It was a pretty funny episode. Yes, he was. A lot, there, uh, honestly, there's a lot of great episodes. Uh, there's a lot of great episodes on, uh, uh, oh, Hot Ones episodes. Nobody likes food lie on the internet who would do that the person running the most influential internet company in the world probably him yay ah <sighs> lastly paul rudd was great oh my god paul rudd pop man i feel like that episode of hot ones really basically just like made Paul Rudd the next Keanu Reeves. Like, everyone loves Keanu Reeves. He's the best. Uh, and, you know, wholesome. And then Paul Rudd comes out, and he's like, who? He's like, what's up? Look at us. Look at us. Yeah, just having a moment. It's fucking great. The last thing I want to mention is you guys need to go watch a one-hour documentary, 53 minutes and 50 seconds, okay? You can spare this. It's for a documentary called The Engoodening of No Man's Sky. Now, The Engoodening of No Man's Sky is a documentary by internet historian who also did The Fall of 76. Talk about Fall of 76. Um, it is a very well put together, basically like, it's basically just a bunch of fucking memes tacked together to show you based just how how we got to this point with No Man's Sky. No matter how you feel about No Man's Sky, and actually I would say if you are not a fan of Sean Murray and No Man's Sky, I would actually encourage you even more to please go and watch this um, watch this video. I, yeah, so I, yeah, I knew No Man's Sky, same, I knew No Man's Sky was, has come a long way from when they first, you know, when they first started. I knew that Sean Murray made a lot of really terrible decisions in his interviews. I knew that there were a lot of promises made that never, you know, came to fruition. Uh, but, I, well, now, now it's a totally different story. But what I didn't know was the, the path that they took to get to that point. To first get to the point of failure, right? Uh, which is launch. And then to move beyond that and, and beyond, uh, and then actually end up saving, uh, hello games effectively and no man's sky. Um, anyways, I don't want to spoil anything else, but I just recommend, please go and watch it. It is really, really good and really fucking funny. Definitely watch it to the end. <laughs> just watch it all the way through to the end. It's totally worth it. No man's sky. The ones who beat star cities to the punch just barely. And they shouldn't have. And they didn't, actually. <laughs> when the game came out, there was nothing. There was nothing in it. But yeah, please, 
please just go and watch it. The whole thing is just, it's it's very entertaining. Uh, the the narrator is is super good. I mean, if you haven't watched any of the Internet Historian stuff, like you typically, you know, it's it's not it's 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 kind of like a parody of a documentary done if it was done by a bunch of fucking meme lords, right? Where they like Fiverr, the fucking guy who does the voiceover, right? It's, it kind of feels like that. It's really well done. So yes, go and check that out. And that's it. That's it for the show. Will it teach me the geck word for geck? <laughs> you have learned the geck word for geck. I have, yeah, I think I've got it like three times playing this game. Hey, what is this? Honestly, Anime, No Man's Sky was so bad, I will not be buying anything from the studio again without a lot of post-launch reviews to justify it. And that's totally fine. I still recommend that you go and watch this documentary. Even if you just watch like the first 30 minutes of it or so. Or the last 30 minutes. I think either one works. It's kind of got a nice cutoff point in the middle. They think pretty much does a lot of redeeming in both the first half and the second half. Uh, but yes, please go and watch it. It's great. But that's it. Play it at four times speed. No, God, don't. <laughs> There's so many fucking shit. So many things flying all over the screen. That's a lot. Um, just watch. Yeah, just watch the first 53 minutes. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it's, it's really irritating if you, if you don't want to give them a chance. There you go. 30 minutes of meme time out of my day. Don't even can spare that. The video is all memes. <laughs> <laughs> the video is all fucking memes. Your your meme time is well spent on this video. I'm one of the weird people that still enjoy both Anomatsuka and Daisy during their worst times. Yeah, that's a weird one. Although I although I was there for Daisy during their worst times, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Even No Man's Sky, I think I enjoyed it to an extent, but I definitely recognize that there was a problem with it. I think I have a BFF report on that, about how shitty it was. I think, did I do a follow-up on that? I don't know. I'm still waiting for this obscure thing that Sean Murray mentioned uh, in passing to somebody on the street uh, outside of GDC in 2014, a feature that is still not in the game. I'm still waiting for that. Until then, they're not getting my money. Anyways, guys, that's the news. First news of 2020. Covering a lot of CES, covering a lot of, uh, uh, of Facebook, the evil empire. And of course, Amazon's uh, saying that Twitch is not meeting their uh, revenue expectations. Rip! We may not make it to the end of the year. But thank you to my co-hosts for joining me today. You guys are the best. Making me double check on that turbo. That was smart. That was smart. You guys gotta keep me in line. I appreciate it. My name is Mike B. You can find me aka Mike B on all the things. AKA Mike B. Photo for other things. I guess that's it. Bye.